Okay, hi there. Um, right, uh, the purpose of this uh, video is to give you an introduction and some advice uh, that I've sort of um, gained from my experience of playing open mic nights and uh, buskers nights, call them what you will. Um, you'll see a, an advertisement in either the local paper or up in the window or in the pub itself saying buskers night, Thursday night, 8 o'clock till 12 or something. Um, you may already know about these things, uh, you may have gone along to it and seen some of the performances that the singers have, uh, have done. Um, I personally have done nearly about a hundred of these in about seven or eight different venues around the Norfolk area. Um, and basically the idea of this uh, YouTube video is just to give you a bit of my experience, pass on some tips, some things that I've learned. This will be completely different for anybody else who's been on stage. Uh, they'll see it from a completely different perspective, but I uh, just want to give you a bit of my background. I've been playing the um, acoustic guitar since I was 18 years old, so I hate to think how many years that's been now. Oh God, too many to remember. Oh, 30, 30 odd years, 30 plus years. So um, I've got quite a bit of experience of playing the guitar. Not so much experience of playing in public because I've been so shy. Um, I've really only gained that experience in the last four or five years. I've just not had the confidence to get up on stage and, um, and bang out a few songs. But um, this is basically what I've learned. Well, first things first, um, we are more likely to be, um, uh, what I've noticed is a sort of current trend, and you may have noticed it as well, that um, the audience are less uh, keen to sort of, uh, if you like, give their appreciation by clapping at the end of a, a song. You'll get the occasional odd clap. Uh, people will probably Way! and whatever and uh, maybe shout out the, the words of the song while you're singing, which is all good signs by the way. Also, if you think people are parodying you, like some some um, uh, some girls, you know, out, out on the night, um, absolutely don't take offence by any of this. Um, if you think people are taking the mickey out of you, um, absolutely don't, don't be phased by it. Um, when I first came across this a while ago, I thought, oh, sh you know, I really thought it was quite offensive, you know, that someone had gone to the effort. I was going to say something, um, but then I didn't, and I actually realised that it's all part of the um, of their appreciation of what you're doing. If you get a reaction, um, any reaction, actually, that's a good thing. That means you're you're doing well. So don't take it that if you don't get an applause at the end of a song and you move on to the next one. Don't take that as an offence. Seems to be a trend nowadays, it's too uncool to, to actually clap. But you'll see the um, appreciation in another way. So that is a really big tip. Uh, and don't ever offend the audience. If someone actually um, uh, invades your personal space by coming right up to you with a glass of beer in their hand and sort of in an intimidating way, Still, even then, still, it should be the um, the job of the host, uh, who's hosting the evening, to um, to sort that problem out. Really, just um, act as though you know they're your friend. They've just come up because they've had a bit of drink, and um, and you'll find that sometimes they will invade your personal space. They'll come right up to you, right close, and maybe whisper in your ear, right in the middle of doing a song. Um, again, you know. I know it's the very, very tempting, it's your first reaction, you've got this thing, this mic, you can use it, uh, um, and, and you feel like you're know, saying, you know, I don't know why I bother, or, you know, please, you know, but again, it's all part of the performance, so there are a few things, I mean, I haven't even picked up my guitar to get onto that bit yet. Um, uh, another thing to bear in mind is, uh, the setting up of, of, of the mic. Some people sit down, a lot of people stand up, but a lot of people prefer to sit down. I prefer to sit down, which means that you're going to need the host to come up and set up your, your microphone. Just just mention it to him or her uh, before you do so, and leave the technical bits to them. I mean, you may be familiar with this mic. I mean, I've got this, I've got this mic stand, and I've got a Shure SM58 mic, which is the absolute industry standard they set you back you can get one on ebay by the way for about i bought this one for 35 pounds second hand and they'll last a lifetime so they're absolutely worth a great investment if you want to do a bit of practice 
to see what your voice sounds like through a microphone. You don't have to be very close to it, by the way. You can get up right close if you want to, uh, because all part of the performance again. You might want to do that. Elton John does that an awful lot. He almost eats the mic, I've noticed. And you'll find some people do that as well. That's up to you. I mean, it's all part of uh, a performance. Part of a performance that, remember, if you're doing this for the first time, you will get instant interest because even musicians like to listen to new musicians and they'll give them encouragement as well. So, because you'll be nervous as hell the first time that you try anything like this, you will be, I mean, go to the toilet beforehand, please, because you'll want to go to the loo afterwards. But the buzz you'll get, I, I mean, I get, I still get, is incredible. It's the adrenaline flowing, um, even when there's just a few people in the pub, which is probably the best time if you're going to start out on your own. Start early. Don't be a, don't be a, an act that comes on. Try and try and get there as early as possible, and try and be one of the first to go on. Um, because if you've done this for the first time, the pub won't be too full. And if you make a few mistakes, and because of your nerves, it won't matter. People will remember you because some some people will come into the pub or hear you in the street and come in, and um, oh, someone new on stage. That's great. So these are all, all useful things. Another thing to bear in mind, some pubs have a stage, some have some lighting, some quite strong lighting. Now, I'm not just wearing this to look cool, or because I think, um, you know, I'm turning a William Hague or something. Um, I'm wearing this because if you're doing a gig for the first time and you don't know this pub all that well, always handy to carry a, um, uh, a hat with a with a a thing to, to block out because the lights the lights can be so intense uh, on some venues that you you actually can't really see much of the audience they really shine and bright in your eyes and you might ask you know why why do they do that well when you see it from the audience perspective it's because you're the center of attention you need a lot of light on 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 the subject to uh, to do it also another thing to bear in mind is sometimes unfortunately i don't know why this is but um, some places don't supply uh, a music stand. So if you know a couple of songs off by heart, that's always a bonus. Problem is, and again, this is just a personal experience, I love to have the music there. I love to have the music stand there with the music, just in case I forget, I um, fumble my words or whatever, and I think, oh God, what's the next chord? So it's always quite nice to have there. But you might find that you can't read it because, um, because it's so dark on this side, on the audience side, you're absolutely having 100 watt, 200 watt, 400 watt bulbs shining in your face. But from their point of view, um, and from your point of view, I mean, you can't see a thing. You're looking down here and you can't read a thing. So you can buy a little uh, battery operated light. And what you want is quite a good one. Not, don't get one of those little tiny ones that you use for book reading. They're rubbish. They, they won't work. What you need is a, a decent sized one, and I haven't brought it now for this demo, I should have done, but you can buy them, they'll set you back about £15 on eBay, again, get it from eBay because they're cheaper, and you want one that will cover a whole A4 landscape piece of thing, and they'll just clip on the top of um, the, the music stand, that is if they're supplying a music stand, if they don't, get your own and bring your own fold up music stand, always useful, especially when you're starting out. Okay, so I mentioned the hat. I mentioned, oh yeah, also don't be afraid to ask for a stool to sit on, a chair, a stool, if that's how you're comfortable playing the guitar. Um, don't be afraid, even if there's not one available. Someone, some, someone, the barman, or someone will be kind enough to get off their chair and lend you their, their stool or their chair just to do the performance. I found that as well. No chair available doesn't necessarily mean, I mean they should they should accommodate these things. The host should bear in mind that um, it's your first time on stage, you'll be absolutely nervous as hell. Uh, that is a good thing, that is a very good thing. And um, they should accommodate all these things. Right, we'll move on to the instrument, the guitar. Okay, a couple of things I've noticed. Get your guitar in tune before you go up on stage. Get it in tune. Um, I find that the audience aren't very appreciative if you spend the first uh, two minutes tuning up. 
because you've had all that time to tune up. There's been two or three people come on before you. I mean, you've had a, a lifetime to get ready for, for, for your guitar being in tune. So I don't understand why people wouldn't have a, t a guitar in tune before they get on the stage. You can go down the corridor of the pub, tune it up before you go on stage. So I don't understand. Another thing is capo. On your first song, um, and this is the first time you've done this at a gig, don't worry about the capo. Play a song that doesn't need a capo. Um, again, the reason is all about tuning, because as soon as you put that capo on, you're going to have to retune again, probably. Uh, the third thing I'd mention is, don't put a new set of strings on your guitar just before you, um, before you gig it, um, because they will go out of tune quite quickly, a new set of strings. But don't use a downgrade old set of strings. So if you're thinking of gigging about seven days beforehand, Put a new set on then. Give them time to settle in because a new set of strings will sound brilliant. As everybody knows who plays the guitar, the first, the first few days you'll be retuning all the time, but after that, when they settle in, a new set of strings just sounds amazing. So do that. Right, okay, so you've got your guitar and it's all in tune and you've got your capo and you're not going to drop it on the floor, are you? Well, you are actually, if you're nervous, it'll drop on the floor eventually. Um, so you, um, so what you can do is you can have another one handy. And some bits, some, some venues have a little, um, a little holder for picks, a pick holder. Um, and, uh, and they'll have two or three on there. And just stick your favourite one on there and then get another one out of your pocket. Because I never drop mine, but I've seen so many people drop their uh, pick on the floor. Um, it's it just it just means you've got to you've got to middle of the song you've got to sort yourself out. Um, so have have it handy and have another one spare. Uh, you won't need that once you've uh, played a, a few times. And you've got a bit of experience behind you. You won't be so nervous. But believe me, you'll be nervous the first time. Um, right, choice of song. Okay. Um, I know you're probably itching to try out your own material if you're a songwriter, unless the, the, the venue is sort of encouraging singer-songwriters, I would stick to absolutely tried and well-known numbers, especially on your first go, because it's not about um, the song, it'll be about you the first time you, and the first time you do it. Actually, I, I could go as far to say it's always about you. And it's it's very little about the song, so choose a song that everybody knows, um, because they're, they're they're just more interested in you than they are of a song, to be honest. Um, and if you're going to play your own songs, that's great. I mean, brilliant stuff. I mean, it's great that you know, you can write your own material and everything, but there'll be a venue for that kind of thing after you've gained the experience and I mean you've played for the first time so why not play something that everybody likes and that you know off by heart I don't, I don't see the reason. so this is one I, I would recommend and the only reason I recommend it is because um, the crowd always likes this one it's Robbie Williams Angels and you say oh no everybody plays that well, there's a good reason why everybody plays it it's because it does get a reaction from the audience and they'll kind of help you out as well because it goes right up. It's got a range on it, hasn't it? So it'd be something like... I soon wait Does an angel Contemplate my fate Do they know The place is where we go I'm loving angels instead but Through it all She offers me protection I love and affection Whether I'm right or wrong Down the waterfall Wherever it may 
take me Know that life won't break me When I come to call She won't forsake me I'm loving angels instead So I'll just play you the first bit of that song um, What will happen is Ooh! Ooh, they're playing Robbie Williams Angels. A few people will turn heads and they'll join in, if you're lucky. <laughs> and if they join in and they're kind of like parodying you, as something happens, that's not offensive at all. If you think that's offensive, you need to get a thicker skin. You need to build up a bit more of a, a humorous thing. Because um, cause you've just done an amazing thing. You've just gone on the stage. Just you, your voice, the guitar and the mic. And you've you've moved someone to do something. And um, even if, you know, you think, oh, God, what are they doing? They're drunk. Well, yeah, but it's all part of the fun, isn't it? That's why people go out to pubs, to, to have a great time. And you'll find that you'll have a great time as well. You, you'll get a buzz out of doing this. And it'll all be worthwhile. Um, and actually, some people I've noticed get quite sort of addicted to it. Um, they, 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 it's a bit like parachuting, I think. It's the sort of same sort of thing. You get a buzz, you get um, a rush of adrenaline um, from doing it. Um, and it can be some of the best feeling in the world. Um, I, I just, it's hard to describe what to compare it to. Because it's not like anything else, really. Um, it's just a unique experience. Um, and now I go on stage now, and I don't get nervous at all. I absolutely get get. Um, I want to do it really badly sometimes, just to get on the stage and do a song. And some nights, and it changes really all the time. But some nights, you just get the audience well on your side. And when that happens, and it, it happens enough that you want to keep doing it, when it happens, there's no feeling like it. Um, and maybe you only get the chance to do three songs. What I would also um, recommend is, um, if it's your very first time performing in public, um, and you're on your own, by the way, I'm always on my own, I hardly ever go with friends, um, I just, just go along bit of a loner anyway so you know um, so I would go on my own wouldn't I but um, probably your first time you do it choose um choose a like I say choose a popular song but probably only play one song and then and then tell tell them tell the host this tell them that you only want to play a single song because the rush that you'll get after the first song finishes the rush you'll get in your in yourself. Um, you probably muck up song number two because you're just so up there on a high. Um, all I'd do is I'd, I'd, I'd mention this that you'd want to do one song but maybe come on to do an, an, another one a bit later. Have a gap because what you'll do is you'll find you, your throat will all dry up and your voice will go because you, you're so nervous. You'll, you'll dry up. Your, your, your vocal cords will dry and your mouth will be so dry. You want to drink so, oh, and don't, yeah, another good point is don't feel necessary to have a drink sort of by your side while, while you're doing your songs. It's a quite a distraction having the drink there. I mean, it sounds like, oh, I'm Jack the Lad, oh, I'll have a drink now. But actually, it'll put off your performance. It'll, it'll put you right off your stride. Um, best thing is to wait till the end. Wait till you come off, then have your drink. Have your drink then, because you'll be really thirsty. And you'll be on such a buzz, um, but then see if the host will slot you in a couple of uh, a couple of artists later. Don't leave it right till the end, because you'll then you'll then um, chicken out. You'll chicken out because what will happen is your um, your buzz, your initial buzz, the big buzz you get, will die down, and then the nerves will kick in again. So the best thing is the maximum sort of uh, period of. Is, is maybe two or three artists later if, and mention this to them, say well I want to do a number say it's the very first time I've, I've done this sort of thing can I leave a gap and then come back on again 
And also it will mean that people will have a chance to come up and say, oh, you don't want to say your first time. You'll have a chance to chat to other musicians. And you may learn a few tips from the particular venue. So you may want to do your second song a bit different after hearing what they think of, of your voice. They may say, oh, you could do with a capo on, a, on that song. You were playing a bit uh, low, a bit low. It was at your key. You'll get a little bit of advice back. And it's usually good, positive stuff because everybody likes to encourage everybody else in this, um, in this stuff. Um, and then, another piece of advice is, once you've done that, once you've had the evening and you're really, you're, oh, that went, you know, oh, I'm not sure how that went, you know, oh, was I completely rubbish, you know, um, you know all those thoughts will go through your mind, as they do, as they've done for me, you know, I mean, how, how bad was that, you know, God, I'll never do that again, type thing, but actually, the best thing to do, either positive or negative, is get back on the horse again, so, to try and try and say to the host, uh, whatever, can you put me in for next week? Um, I'd like to go on early because uh, I'm new and stuff. And then uh, if, he might say to you, oh no, we can't do that. We wait to see who turns up on the night and whatever. But um, or you could look and see if there's another one going a couple of days later in another pub in, in where you live and go for it. I mean, what I would say is as soon as you start out on this journey of yours, doing your own stuff, doing doing songs for people. Um, keep it up and, and get some, get in there quick, get in there quick, get in quick and get out quick to start with. It's because you need to gain that experience. So you want to be playing some familiar songs, really familiar stuff I mean, you know. Um, and, um, uh, and get yourself into another, another place pretty quick. See if you know two or three places and go for it, go for it. And I'll tell you what, you'll never look back. You'll never look back. Because um, there's nothing like it. It's just, and also the people you meet as well. The, um, the experience you'll get from uh, other musicians. It's just amazing. There's a, there's a whole community of people out there. And uh, a whole group of new friends that you'll make. And you'll learn so much from it. And there's just nothing like it. I mean, it, there is absolutely nothing like playing live. And, and I just can't recommend it enough, really. Um, it'll change your life. So, best of luck, and hopefully, if I get some feedback from this uh, YouTube, I'll try and give some more advice in various areas of, of doing this kind of thing. But that's just an initial thing, and that's just obviously a completely personal point of view. So, best of luck. Bye.